All right. Okay, everyone, welcome to CAD workshop part two. Um, we're gonna, today we're gonna go over uh, assemblies, drawings, and animations. Um, I know we kind of went over this last week, but we're gonna go over it again for, I think there were three of you who weren't here. Um, and for anyone on, on Zoom or online or whatever. Um, so what is CAD, right? Um, CAD is computer aided design and basically it can do that to do a lot of different things. So 3D modeling, which is kind of what we're doing today with, you know, um, Inventor Pro, Fusion, um, SolidWorks, do PCB design, which we'll teach you later in the semester. Um, architecture, just like like um, Revit or, or Civil 3D. You know, 2D CAD, like 2D drawings. Um, and then there's a lot of different types of software even besides that. Um, why do we CAD? Because it makes things much easier. <laughs> Um, the software can do a much better and more precise job than we can. And it's a really great way to get it into um, uh, like uh, manufacturing software. So you'll often see like CAD CAM softwares. CAD stands for computer aided design. CAM, stand CAM stands for computer aided manufacturing. Um, and they usually do both. Especially if you're doing like, you know, 3D printing um, or laser cutting, this is really helpful. Also, you can't really... I mean, you can draw in 3D, but you can't like rotate your object on a drawing. It's just helpful. Um, do some examples. This is what we're doing today. This is the care box. Um, so you all built the um the last part of it last week, or at least you got as far as you could in the time of it. Um, but we're gonna do the whole thing. We're going to assemble the whole thing today. Um, this is a hair loop from a couple of years ago. Um. Uh, like RC car, and you can kind of see actually that these are all assemblies. Like all of these have multiple different parts, right? This is not one model. It's it's a bunch of different parts put together. That's what the assembly is. Um, yeah, better running machine, the same story. Even this one, like this is a little, you know, it's this is one part, but then it's got um all the electrical components and uh, PCBs on top. All right. We're gonna go over design for assembly again because we're doing assemblies today. Does anyone know what that means? No? By the way, yes. Um, what do you mean? Well, yes, but do you know what it means to design specifically for assembly? Okay. Design for assembly means that you design in a way that makes assembly easy. Um, you're not going to assign something where you have like really hard to reach spaces and you know screws that don't exist and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and this is, I think, not something that's talked about a lot in classes, but it's really important. Um, so, you know, basic concepts are like use as few parts as possible. Um, it's easier to assemble for one thing, and there's less things that can break, less things that can go wrong. Um, if you see this right here, this is an internal combustion engine versus an electrical motor. One part versus I don't even know how many parts, uh, probably in the thousands. Um, the, it's the one part is just much more reliable than the gazillion parts. It, there's less things that can go wrong. Um, am I talking too fast? Because I get that criticism a lot. So let me know. <laughs> um, use common or existing parts where possible. And make or use parts that can be quickly assembled by common tools. So if you see these types of screw screw drivers, right? Excuse me, types of screws right here and all the different heads. I don't know why anyone would ever make a screw like that unless it's for security reasons. If you're building like a consumer product, you only need like Phillips head and flat head. That's it. The rest of these are like pointless. So big companies will use them for security if you don't want people like tampering with your stuff because the tools don't exist, or at least the tools are very hard to find. Other than that, if you use one of these like specialized screws that needs a specialized tool, you're just making your life and everyone else's life much more difficult for no reason. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> um, same thing with like non-standard screws. Like if you have like non-standard like you know depth or depth or you know whatever, like just there's no reason for it. Just buy the stuff that exists already. It will make it will increase the cost exponentially to make a new kind of screw, and it will make everyone's lives more difficult. I can't say this enough, like use the parts that exist. Um, make part differences obvious. 
has everyone has anyone ever had that um uh experience where they're trying to put together like a piece of furniture and there's two different parts that look exactly the same but they're different <laughs> and use them for different things and there's such a slight difference you can't really tell this is kind of what that's getting at is like if you're go if you have two different parts find a way to mark them somehow so that people don't confuse them when they're assembling them um yeah so make it easy to confuse parts and then make parts symmetrical when possible um, so that you don't end up like orienting them the wrong way by accident. Um, went through circular design last week too, but it's important, so I want to go over it again. Um, this is the concept of like making products um, that are can be easily fixed and easily assembled, but parts can be reused, recycled. So we talked about assembly. This is like designed for disassembly. It's how to take things apart, how to design things that are easy to take apart. So that if you need to fix them um, or recycle them, it's easy to do. So again, minimal number of components, um, minimal number of joints and connectors. Um, and if you're going to do connectors, right, instead of something like welding or rivets or glues that are kind of permanent, um, use connectors or fasteners, like, you know, uh, latches, snap fits, clips, bolts, and even screws. Um, because again, you can disassemble those. Um, try to avoid air removal coatings. Um, I think I went over this last week, but has, does everyone know why drink cups cannot be recycled? The paper ones that look like they can be? It's because they actually have like a plastic lining on them to prevent the drink from getting through. So they look like they're recyclable, but they're not. And again, that's for a good reason to like make sure that your drink does not disintegrate the cup. Um, but just if you are able to not put the coating on it, don't put a coating on it because then you can't you can't separate the two components. If that makes sense. Um, don't make it easy to damage the product when you're assembling it. Design it so you can assemble it without breaking stuff. Um, and also just like good labeling and documentation because if you you know have good documentation of how to assemble and assemble, disassemble stuff, um, it's it's easy to take apart. I don't know how else to explain it. You get what I'm saying, right? <laughs> you, if there's no instructions, um, it makes things much more difficult for people. And then also, just like this kind of like going back to design for assembly, because a lot of these are like just good design principles. Like you can kind of see right here, these are like you know snap fits. That is much easier than screws. Like being able to just like press it and pull it out, it takes significantly less time than having to screw and unscrew screws. So if you're able to get away with that, do that. Um, and then this isn't really related to assembly as much, but just more circular design tips. Use as little material as possible. So good design should rely on geometry, not increased mass. You've got this kind of like example here. You've got the thick wall and you can place it with ribs instead. Again, um, and same thing here, right? With, with, with trusses. Concept is um, just using less material, right? It's less expensive. It's less less stuff. So it is good design, and it's also just good for the environment. Um, and again, avoid unsupported components. That's my brand on circular design. I apologize. I've said it twice now, but it's important. Okay, finally, we're gonna get in some CAD stuff. This is the assembly basics. So first is mates. Um, mates are basically like you're defining to the program how different parts are going to connect to or relate to each other um, in an assembly. So the most common types are like coincident, that's when the um, parts are like touching or connected, um, parallel, perpendicular, tangent, and concentric. Um, I don't think I need to really go over any of what that means, right? Like parallel, perpendicular, yeah. And then concentric, of course, is like, you know, circles within circles. Um, that's really helpful if you need to put stuff on like axes. And then you can also have like defining distances and angles. So you can mate one part to another, like you know, a distance away from it or a set angle away from it. Um, and then you can also do some like advanced or mechanical mates, which is kind of what you can see in the pictures here. You can do like a width mate, it's really helpful. That's when you need to center something in between two other parts. Um, and then you can also do like what we're gonna do today with like the gear mates. So it's a way to connect gears in a way that they like know to react to each other. Or, or know to fit together in the program is what I'm getting at. And then, you know, you can also do like slots or cams, um, hinges, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're not going to use those today. 
um, exploded views. I don't think we're going to get into this today, but it's a, something you can do in assembly to show all of the parts um, in that exploded form. So it allows you to see the hidden parts and connections and how they all kind of fit together. So you can see some examples here. Right, so all the different parts are not, they're not covered, they're not um, hidden. You can see everything. Any questions on this? Okay. If you have a question at any point, just interrupt me. It's cool. Um, and then animations, I wasn't going to look at the video working here, but it's a way to show the moving parts in assembly as they're moving. And you can also simulate stuff like motors um, or other moving components. So you can say like, you know, simulate what would happen if this part was moved at this speed with this motor. And we'll show you that today. Um, it's a great way to like show off designs. If you're, you know, presenting a design to someone, this is a really cool thing to be able to do. Um, technical drawing basics. So this is the other thing we're gonna do today is drawings. Um, we're gonna see drawings aren't, like that's an isometric view right there. Drawings are not an isometric view. They're gonna be like perspective views. And you usually have like the front, the top, and the side, which you'll see in a sec. Um, technical drawings are basically here. Let me show you example here. So you can kind of see like front, side, um, top, right? Front, top, side. So this is what how your drawing is going to look. Um, a technical drawing is basically like a blueprint of whatever it is you're making. Um, it's got all the dimensions. It has different perspectives, like I just said. Um, usually tolerances on them, uh, you know, and you can you can use different features to give different information depending on what it is you're making. But these are kind of the basics. Um, some basic tips: do not overdimension it. It just overcrowds your drawing for no reason. If you can get one dimension showing per showing the person or drawing what that dimension is, you don't need to put it on multiple different views. Just once is enough. Um, use detail views to show smaller features, which I'll show you. So there's a way to make really tiny features bigger. Um, it's a great way to show the details and be able to mention those um, in a way that everyone can see it and it's not tiny. Um, make sure to show the hidden lines. That's an important one. Um, you need to be able to see what's behind in the drawing. Otherwise, you're like you just aren't going to be able to see all the parts. That's really important. Um, label, label your tolerances. That's super important for machining. You do not ever want to have an instance where you don't tell someone how specific the tolerance needs to be. And then also just make sure you have to complete a title block. So I'll show you all of those things. And again, you can see right here, these are the detail views. We've got like detail A, detail B, and we'll we'll go through all of that. Um, bonus document, you can also do it on materials. So this is a list of all the parts and copies um, in your uh, in your assembly. So you get all the parts, um, all the quantities. Here, it's only one of each. And then you can put it in the description as well if you want. And I think I just went through presentation record time. <laughs> We're gonna start modeling. Everyone ready? No? All right. Oh. Um, Okay. Uh, this should be a few minutes. Let me write it. Everyone have a few minutes? Yeah? Okay. Does everyone have the parts downloaded? Yes? Are you able to get those parts into the virtual lab? <laughs> do you know how to do it, Josh? Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, and then upload it to. Okay.
Katie, do you want me to email the parts to you? Okay. What's your email? What's your email? What was it? C wait. C A D E N. Okay. At you all come. Okay. Let me know if you got them.
You good? All right. You have the parts? All right. So first thing you're gonna do, um, go up here to new, uh, click it, and then we're gonna click assembly, All right? And then click okay. Oh wait, where's Alexa? Straight from your back. Hey, Bethany. All right. You know what? She's gonna be super lost when she gets back. Let's just wait a few more minutes. Is everyone cool with that? What? Why did you guys not tell me? Okay. All right. Is everyone here? Everyone's here. Yes. Okay. So oh, you see this part where it says open documents, parts to insert? Go to browse. And this is where you're going to um, choose your files. So, did that. You guys can just choose like all the files. Don't choose all the files. They give you a lot of gears actually. But you need you need the, the case. You need three gears, a washer, um, and a carrier. What? One washer, three gears, or three planet gears, and a sun gear and a carrier. And you go to enter components up here at the top if you need to um, bring it to the options again. Uh, you can, but you're going to need a lot of extra gears. You can just delete them if you want. It's up to you. Okay, let me know when you're at this point and you have all the parts in here. Kaden, the parts are you're able to get them through your email? Okay, cool. Yeah. 
has a Reynolds doing? You have all the parts in your, yeah, you do. Jason? Angel. One washer, three gears. All right, so let me know when you're ready. Okay, hey. so are you in the virtual lab today? Downloaded? Um, <laughs> what, what percentage is that? Do you want to try and logging on to the virtual lab or do you want to keep waiting for it? It is, but I mean, it's up to you. Okay. So right now what everyone's doing is opening up the parts uh, from the file that I sent on Discord. So you need um, one, one case, one carrier, one washer, one sun gear, and three planet gears. Okay, Angel, how are you doing? Okay. You're good? Okay. Um, okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click this button right here called me. You see it? So this is like I was telling you, mate, it's how you tell the parts how to relate to each other in SolidWorks. So my computer is the worst art working. Okay, there we go. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna zoom way into this washer and rotate it. You're gonna click that little slice of, of material right there in the middle. Don't click one of these like other sides because they're not flat, click the one in the middle. I know that's very challenging. Like that, and then you're gonna click, and the part should turn kind of like transparent once you've clicked the part to meet, or excuse me, once you click the surface to meet. Once you've clicked that, you're going to click this like little axle right here in the middle of the case, and you're gonna see right that's now it's defaulting to concentric because you clicked two circles, which is exactly what we wanted to do, and it has now lined them up. It has now lined them up perfectly. You click the, uh, the check mark when you're done. Everyone come with that me. Yes, no. Anyone not done with it? Okay. Let me know ready. You need help? So I'll show you how to But right now, all you need to do is just have it concentric with the axle and the distance. Yes, you're going to So now what you're gonna do is if you click on this, uh, the washer, right, you can move it back and forth. Well, yeah, so you can see like it's kind of locked in place around that that center that center line, the, the um, 
I guess the axis that's in common between it and the axle. So now you want to define like a distance. Oops. No. No. Okay. Um. So now what you're going to do is you're going to rotate so you can see the back of the axle, the back of the washer, and you're going to click that back surface. And then you're going to click the front surface of the case. And you're going to see it's going to do that. If it attaches to the back of the case, um, you see this button here called Made Alignment? Whichever one it's on, click the other one. Um, and that, yes. You see how that made it onto the other side now? So it's on the other side. So that'll, that'll um, solve the problem if you got it on the wrong side. But you want it on the front. And then again, you click the green truck mark when you're done to finish the action. How's everyone doing already? We're still working on it. Yeah. So if you ever I'll put it on the big screen. Um, if you're ever having issues with um like your mate and you need to access them or just check which ones you have, you can click the little arrow right here and it'll show you. So we've got a concentric, concentric, and a coincidence. And there's the two we just did. So we're gonna go back into mate mode and we're gonna touch the carrier. If my computer will stop freezing. Here we go. And we're gonna do exactly what we just did. We're gonna do a concentric with this middle part here, um, that main axis. And then we're going to do a coincidence between this, and we're not gonna choose um, the back of the case this time, we're gonna choose the front of that gear, so we need the front of the washer. And if it does this, again, press that made alignment uh, button so it switches uh, direction. Let me know when you're at this stage. Let's see how's it going. You? Yeah, I think that it's going to be a little bit higher than the stuff, but maybe it's going to be a little bit more than Okay, yeah. So maybe you won't be able to do the assembly, but you can tell you like the drawings does. Yes? Which one? 
Um, it's not a cog, it's the carrier, it's this thing here. So it's got the extra axles um, to attach those um, planetary gears. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, huh? Oh, there we go. A little better, at least. Turn the lights off. How's that? Yeah. Is that better for a see? Okay, cool. Okay. So how's everyone doing? Have they gotten this done or still need four minutes? Yeah? Can you help? Okay. Okay, cool. So we're going to move on to this outer gear right here. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to do uh, one concentric gear between this and the middle axle, and then a concentric mate between the back and the front, the front uh, face of this carrier right here. Again, doing that concentric mate and then doing the um, coincident mate. And just look like that when done. Yes, except those didn't go on those uh, these exterior axles right here. So actually, yeah, if you guys want to start doing those, you're welcome to go ahead, and and, and I can do them too. I'm super curious, what colors do I choose? Oh. Do you want to do different colors? You do a little notification if you flip it. It's knowing, but it's it is. There's no no harm in it. Oh. Okay. 
Yeah, so if you need to flip it, um, again, just press that button right down there. That should flip it the other way. Yes, so if you need to... Just come down here and choose right. Yeah, you can edit it. Or just start to that point. Well, you can just add it to the screen. It's not. If anyone needs to read this and they're like, Yeah, so it doesn't do the bottom side. Um, if you do the top side, the top side is going to be face down. So, yeah. Okay. So, you are not going to use eccentric with that one. So, just add it next. Let's start with the middle direction. Put so that one right there. Is it in? Then hit the domain. Hit the interior cylinder bolt. Yeah, like that. And then zoom out. And then you click on. Now go back to the center. You click on that little bit. Take it home. Just keep it. Not because you had one of the places you put before, so we know that it's your here. Click it again. Click the back face with this. Yes. And then the front face will be here because that's what you want to see. It would not just be colors. Okay. And then it's on the bottom side. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
got all of your mates, um, all of these mates uh, completed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into mechanical mates. And this is where you're able to mate your gears. So right now, right, you can see if we move these, right, you can kind of see how it's overlapping right there. Right? So the parts are like through each other. You see that? Yeah, so that's what we don't want. You're going to do is you're going to line up all of your gear teeth so that um, they are not. Oops. Get out of mate. Yeah, get out of mate and and just like rotate all of your gear teeth so that they are not overlapping any of these other teeth. Right. Everyone, let me know when they're done with that. How are you? You're good. 
Angel? Angel Josh, how are you guys doing? What's that? Okay, let me know when. You guys need help? Or are you good? Yeah, you ready? Okay, Josh? Good? Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go into mate. Wait for it to load. Okay. You're going to go into mechanical right here. And you're going to hit gear. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick one of these uh, gears and zoom in. You're going to click one of these surfaces right there. See that? And then do the same thing on the side gear. It doesn't matter which surface it is. It just needs to know this, like, the size ratio. And you're gonna hit the check mark. And you're gonna do that for all of your gears. So all three of these in relation to the sun gear and all three of them in relation to the outside um, ring gear. So there should be six mates in all. And you have to press gear mate every time. It's not gonna default like it does for the other ones.
Is everyone having it like work? Has everyone gotten all the mates done yet or no? Does anyone need help? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And honestly, you may need like a student. Um, for some reason, it's like we need issues where right? it's like break the mate to make the end for the reason. So if you can leave it like this, it's really helpful. <laughs> and it's pretty easy to You buy it? This is about only two breaks. Um, I think for our purposes, it's it's okay. Um, even if you have the mate, sometimes we program like a little bit more work, and so we're always still busy anyway. Yeah, as long as what? Yeah, all the time. But I think if you've got two people here, if you've got a planet thing to move on the side, and if you're engaged to send here, you're good. Right. Is it? Is it? Oh, that's awesome. Nice job. All right, Jason, you good? All right, I think everyone's ready to move on, right? Hey, right, Alexa, how are you doing? Um, I've been here for two years. Okay. So, do you want us to wait for you? Okay. So, this is basically the assembly. This is finished. Congratulations. You're, I think so, for some of you, this is like your first solid assembly. Now, we're actually going to do an animation. So, we're going to come up here and click new motion study. Everyone see that? 
pick that button. And something should pop up down here, just click that upwards arrow. I hope two for no good reason. Everyone here? Everyone see what I'm seeing on, on their screens? All right. So now you're going to take this um, time bar and we're gonna move this to, you can honestly do whatever you want. I'm gonna do five seconds. Everyone good with the time bar. So it should be like right here. You just move it to wherever you want it, however long you want the video to go for. Yes, you're all done? Okay. Um, now what you're going to do is you're going to click, you see right here, these options. So there's um, gravity, there is uh, contact, spring, and then motor. We're going to use motor. Click on that. And the component direction, you see you've got rotary motor um, should be should be already collected. Should be already collect. If it's not, hit that. Um, but we're gonna click on the face of the sun gear right here. And you can the pair right there, show you what direction is moving. It can be any direction you want. I'm gonna go the other way. You have constant speed. You can honestly hit whatever you want. I'm gonna use 20 RPM. Up here for a while. When you're done, click the check mark. Hmm? What's up? So did someone get it to work? Yeah. So when you're done with this, hit the check mark. And then when you're done, you can hit this button right here that says play from start. And you should get that noise. Did everyone get it to work? Yeah, you're all seeing the gears. Like I can do it again. And again, you can tell me that's like the direction or the speed, as much as you want. You can also go right in here and see how it's um, at one times the speed. You can choose any of these options, but you can go faster or slower if you want to save the video. So, so I can do two times. Yeah. Um, so back to one, so you can have it go in slow-mo, slow-mo if you'd like. Um, you don't have to do this, but if you'd like, you can save it. Um, the animation is like that button right there. Everyone seen this? You can click that button. And I'm not going to save it, um, but you can save it as like an MP4 file. And then that'll be, you know, on your computer. So I'm gonna do that, but yeah. Has everyone, did everyone get the animation working? Is it cool? Okay, so hopefully if you're ever in a situation where you need to, you know, simulate something, you can use this. All right, so that being said, I think I'm now going to save this. Um, so everyone go into save. We, we honestly should have done this earlier. Um, but <laughs> hit save, hit rebuild and save document if it gives you that option. And then you can save it as whatever you want. Um,
Um, it doesn't matter what you saved it as, um, but remember where you saved it because you're going to need it later. You should probably save it like the same place as all the other files. Once you do that, um, close the window. Um, not the entire SOLIDWORKS program, just this, um, just this one tab. And let me know when you're ready to start part two. Alexa, how are you doing? Okay. All right, everyone where I am right now, ready to move on? No? Tell me yes or no. Okay. Do you need help or are you just um, still working? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you did. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, oh, you can also push this, but if you always oh, click one of the comments on the assembly, like click um, left click on this uh, that. Yeah, so you can click that. It's quite easy to have again. Um, so oh yeah. Uh, well, you're, you're, you got it, but if it takes to the time, the only the reason and taking like fix or book components based on where you want them, what they want them to be. So, did you save everything? Okay, so save this and then just X out right there, and then we have a book, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. It sounds like the mates went wrong. Okay, do you need help or do you know what I'm wrong? Okay. 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 Okay.
So what you're going to do is, yeah, don't don't do that because um, you're just placing them where you want them and not actually connecting them in the program. Mm -hmm. So you're just dragging them where you want them right now. Um, I would say, because it looks like those two are needed. Um, X out of this. Yeah, like X out of both. You should not have any tangent mates. You don't your tangent mates. You should get rid of your tangent mates. You should not have Okay, so you're not driving, you're, you're connecting, you're picking the surfaces. You're not in it. So, right now, just delete these two on um, pin. So, you should not have any pin on it. You only need to print it. Okay, and Okay, everybody heard drawings. All right. So technical drawings are not CAD models. They're just like ways of showing people, you know, like the dimensions and um, the kind of like if you're giving it to machinist, right? This is what you give it to machinist if they were doing it by hand instead of if they're doing it um, through a CAD software. So put a new and click drawing. And then click OK. All right, does everyone see this? So if you notice, if you go to the different sizes, right, this one's like 46 inches by 33 inches. Um, this one's 23 by 16. Um, it doesn't really matter because we can resize it down whenever we print it, but we're going to use A3, which is 16 by 12. That's kind of like the only one that's not absurdly huge um, when not like this. And then you can browse, there's more. Um, but honestly, like it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to use A3. So do that and click OK. Does everyone see this on their screen? Yes? Yes? OK. Um, so where it says open documents right here, just like an assembly, you're going to hit browse. And you are going to click on, uh, we're going to do the pen for your box piece. And we're going to click on right here. Make sure that you're on front view because otherwise you'll look back. All right. Once you are here, go click, you can view front view. And then you can drag downwards and it'll give you top view uh, and side view. And these are the three views you want. And if like you can do that, you can put in a nice metric view, but usually don't need it. That's just kind of for fun. So when you're done with that, hit escape. Is everyone seeing this on their screens? Angel? Okay. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to click on um, any of these views, right? And it's going to open up that those options for us again on the side. Um, scroll down and see where it says scale. So there's use sheet scale and use custom scale. We're going to click on use custom scale. And that allows us to change it. So we can go like one tenth if we wanted it way smaller. We're going to go one to one because we have a report here. And you might need to like drag these a little bit to get it to all fit, but it, it will fit. There we go. And you can get these like moved down or up to uh to accommodate. Mm -hmm. Oh, also really important when you're here. Hang on. Everyone get them resized. You always want to size them as large as possible while being within like the scope of the drawing paper. But you're going to, you see where it says display style right here? Uh, so you're going to click on this one. This shows the hidden lines. So you always want to be able to see it. You always want to be able to see the hidden lines because otherwise there's going to be all these features on the far that you're not going to know exist um, from the views that are here. So if you didn't have these hidden lines, right? Be back there, right? Um, I wouldn't be able to see the writing on the back, and I would have no idea that these things, uh, features right here, existed because you can't see those from from here. All right. Everyone done? All right, you guys, you good? You're here? Yeah? Okay. All right, now we're going to do the dimensions. So just like we did in, in parts, um, hit smart dimension right up here. And that is going to allow you to put dimensions on here, just like that. So this is like seven inches, right? Um, this is six inches. And just honestly, just keep mentioning it. You don't need to mention all of them because we're just doing practice right now. Um, but yeah, just as much as you would like to. And make sure that you're utilizing like the other drawing angle, the other drawing um, perspectives. So we get this fill out right here. This is 0.5 inches. Uh, yeah, diameter of this, three. Show the chamfer. And then use these hidden lines again to show like the thickness. Mm 
You can place the mention description anywhere you want. All right, how's everyone doing at dimensions? Can you going? I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll be recording. Yes, the club membership. Talk to you. All right. Everyone got the hang of dimensioning and, and drawings? All right. So what we're going to do now is detail views. So you're going to insert up here. Drawing view. And then you can do a lot of different views. Um, we're going to do detail. So if you zoom in to um, right here, right? You're going to click. It's like making a circle. Click, drag, try, click, release, drag, and click again. And you'll get just like a few of these teeth. And then place that detail view somewhere on the side. You can change the scale as well. Like two. Five to one. I think I'm going to stick with two to one. Then I'm going to do another detail view um, of this up right here. And so it'll label these like detail A, detail B, but you can change those numbers if you want. Um, you just like double click and give it a sec. It should let you edit. Yeah, so that should that'll let me edit the text if I want to. It gives you the, the detail number and the scale. And then once you have these detail views, you can like extra dimension them um, so that you can see the dimensions in, uh, in these views here. All right, does everyone have the detail views? Yeah. No. Angel? Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is you can actually sketch directly into um, the, the drawing. You go to the sketch tab up here. And you're going to do exactly what we did last week. Go into line and center line. And you're going to zoom in here. And you're going to find the midpoint of one of these, um, is it one of these um, gear teeth right here? So you'll see it should snap to like that orange dot. Click that orange dot. 
and then go to the center, which is up as well. And then go back and click another one of these um, centers. Once you've done that, hit escape. Um, enter the line tool again, center line again, because we're doing construction lines. And then snap to the middle of this part in between. And back to the center. And what this does is it allows us to label the angles. So do you guys have the center lines? I can get to more minutes. Take that as you need four minutes. Anyone need help? You can just tell me. You don't need to know me if you ask. Okay. I think it's well. Um, just go to the line here. Yeah. And then to the other Of course. Jason, you good? Once you've got these lines, you're going to go to the interpart dimension again. And you're going to click on, just like we did last week, click on both these lines. So that it gives you the angle. You should be able to do 2.25 in between um, the left and center. If this is making dimension driven, that's really fine. And then dimension again between um, the two outer lines. And now your machine just knows um, what angles the teeth are at. And honestly, like you should be putting, oh, 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 something I should point out. You see how these lines here um, just have the dimension and these ones have that little circle with the line through it? That means like circle. That means like you're dimensioning like the radius or diameter of a circle. Or excuse me, diameter, because radius has this R right here. And smart dimension is smart, it knows that. Um. Yeah, technically all of these should have like tolerances, but I don't really want to do that right now. All right, is everyone done with this? Yeah? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the title block. So, click, so right, excuse me, left click, right click somewhere on the sheet, and click edit sheet form. And now everything else disappears, but you have this title block that you can edit, which you can zoom into.
So everyone's seeing this. Okay. So what you can do is I don't know why the name is in the drawing number. That's wrong. But double click on this text and replace it with one because this is drawing number one. Um, so like if you had a parts list, right? Um, you would correspond that drawing number with each of the list of parts. Um, each each part would be given a number and you would correspond that number with the drawing number right here. So this is how you can organize things within a list of parts. Once you click, so, okay. So you see how when I'm dragging this around here, there's that little like paper looking thing by my cursor. And then when I drag it in here, it looks, it has an A to indicate text. That means if I click on it, uh, I'll be able to type there. So double click. It might take more than once because the program's pain. Wait for it to load. Continue to wait. And let's try again. Sometimes you just have like click. Sometimes you just have to keep clicking and really harass the program until it decides to cooperate. Come on, there we go. And now you can see you can type in there. So I'm gonna put um, planetary gearbox case. And then you can click outside of that and that'll be the title. We're gonna do the same thing with like revision. Version one, because um, sometimes you revise drawings and that's why you put the version number. But this is our first drawing, obviously. Scale says one to two, but it's actually one to one. This one's wrong. Um, a lot of this stuff will auto kind of populate, but sometimes you have to correct it. Material, I believe we made that out of aluminum from, from last week. If it's being really uncooperative, you can just go over to annotation here and put note, and that'll allow you to type in here. Actually, no, that's wrong. Is it getting out? That's not what I wanted to do. I'm sorry. There you go, that's what I wanted. This box is where you're supposed to type. But again, because it's works, it's being, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Temperamental. <laughs> it's being very temperamental. There we go. I've never had it happen before. There we go. Okay. And then you can put like your name here under like John because you're the person who made the part. Um, and you put the date and then check for your job to be like your manager if you, this was a job or something.
Has everyone really hit a block? Has everyone gotten it to work? Yeah, okay. Now, the last thing we're gonna do, which is interesting, is the weight. So, you're actually gonna need to open up the other part for this. So go back to open up here. And you're going to open up Venture Europe case. That's what we've been um, drawing. Does everyone have this open? I need four seconds. Yeah, getting you good? All right, so what you can do is you see um, right here how it says 1060 alloy, right there. That is because I assigned it a material, um, which I believe I went over last time you were here. So what you can do is right here up and evaluate, you can go to mass properties, and you can see it gives you the mass, it's 2.16 pounds um, based on the material that you provided it with and the density of that material. So now that we have the weight, close this, um, save and close the part. And then we can go down here and fill in uh, give it a sec. can fill in 2.16 pounds. And there's other parts to set a block, but that's all we're going to do for today. And once you've done that, you're going to go back to this thing in the corner and hit that. That's basically like your check mark. And now you've got um, your finished, you know, title block uh, and your whole drawing. So everyone finished that. Yeah, good, okay. Now, obviously I don't know printer here, but I'm gonna show you what to do if you want to print this. Is you're gonna go up here um, to file, print. And this is important, um, page setup. Um, if I preview right now, I'm gonna get that because um, the, the drawing paper size that they gave you is way bigger than what you actually have. Click close. Um, if you want to, let me turn it again. And go back and page up. If you want to print this um, in a way that it actually fits on a paper, you have to press scale with it. <laughs> I can't emphasize this enough. It will drive you um, crazy if you don't do it. Like that. Now click preview. Now it all fits on your normal like printer size paper. So if you ever want to print your drawing, this is important. Um, and clearly I'm not going to actually print it because we don't have a printer. Oops. All right. So now you can all choose to save your drawing or not. I don't really care, it's up to you, um, but we are gonna move on. So um, save it or don't save it, um, just close it. And let me know when you're back here. Yeah, that's good. All right. So we're going to do one more type of drawing. So go back to open. Excuse me, not open. Not open. Don't like that. That's all. Go to go to new. <laughs> Sorry. And click drawing again. Click OK. 
Um, we're gonna do the same A3. Is everyone here? Okay. I click browse. And instead of choosing the part this time, um, we're gonna choose the assemblies. Remember I said you're gonna need it later? So, um, let's read gearbox assembly. And click to place. Um, I'm just going to do, just for this, I'm just going to do like the one view, but I am going to do isometric. So right here, I'm going to click this, and that is going to make an isometric view. Um, let's see, can I, I'm going to try and rotate it. This earlier. Here, zoom pan rotate. If anyone's having this issue as well, I'm going to say rotate view. Come on. Right here, can you join view? There we go. That's what I wanted. All right. Perfect. So everyone's drawing like this. I don't know if you guys were in the same era I was. Are you are you here? Angel? Oh, it's fine. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is just like a matter of preference for me. I just want this one like drawing. You can delete the other two, you can keep them, it doesn't matter. Um, I am going to make this bigger though. So just like I did with the other one, click, um, scroll down, and use custom scale, one to one. There we go. All right, is that a bit bigger? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just, I'm going to go to tables right here, click down, and I'm going to go to bill of materials, and then select your drawing. So just select anything in this drawing. And then you're going to get this list right here of like table template, bill of materials. Um, you don't need to change the settings, just click shipwreck. And now it's going to give you your bill of materials. That is the list of everything that is in this um, document. Excuse me, everything that is in the assembly. Everyone should have some, everyone should have seven parts. Does everyone have seven parts? No, not have some parts. Now, this is important. You have to do the bill of uh, materials first. 
once you've done that, you can hit auto balloon. And um, check mark. Oh, wait. Stop. Auto balloon. And then it's this. Select the drawing because like you just build materials. And then click the check mark. I mean, there's like different types of like balloons you can do and layouts, but we're just keep the settings as they are. That is now done is it has created um, labels for all your parts that correspond to the build materials. If you create the build, if you create the build materials first, you can auto balloon it so that um, everything matches. And just drag these so that they're, you know, better positioned. So the six here, that's referring to this gear. Um, number eight. Number seven is referring to this gear. Number four, that's the sun gear. Right, number one is the case, et cetera, et cetera. This is a little bit inconvenient, but it's okay. And then it's it's hiding the washer, but that's, honestly, that's okay for our purposes. Everyone successfully do that, the materials and, and balloons. All right, and then if you ever wanted to like put a description in here, um, you can do that as well, but I don't think we really need to. Yeah, and you can also, I can show you how to put a bill of materials into uh, uh, an assembly as well if you want. It's like the exact same process. It'll generate this exact same list. But um, yeah, I think, I think that's actually everything. Um, I think last week we went, oh, uh, we didn't quite get to everything. So I was trying to make this week shorter. And I don't think I made it long enough. So is there anything else you want me to go over or do you want to leave early? Oh, yeah, share a preference. No questions? No? Okay. We all go home early. Or is there anything else you want me to show you? You need extra help? Okay, in that case, I guess we're done. Um, thank you all so much for coming to the workshop and I hope you had fun. I hope you learned to do SolidWorks. Um, I know some of you didn't get to do the whole thing, but this will be posted hopefully over the weekend. Um, and yeah, um, DM me if you have any questions. Cool. All right, I'm going to stop recording.